Hey everyone, my name is Whitney and I am a dental hygienist. If you are new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today we're teeth talking about the different job and career opportunities within the field of dental hygiene. So I really feel like being a dental hygienist is one of the best jobs ever because the beauty of this career is that you can really make whatever you want out of it. You can work full-time chair side in the op or you can work part-time chair side in the op or be a temp. Say if you wanna focus on another job or another non-dental hygiene gig on the side. The dental hygiene career itself is open to so much flexibility. There's options working clinically chair side as well as other non-clinical options. So having said that, let's start with working as a clinical dental hygienist. When you attend dental hygiene school, they train you to be a clinical dental hygienist. Whether you decide to work in private practice or in corporate or other opportunities, clinical chair side opportunities, they can be significantly different experiences. We all know that even within, say, a private practice, there can be tons of different types of offices depending on different variables, such as the owner, the dentist who do your exams, the appointment times, etc. So if you're someone who's watching this video right now because you feel like you are unhappy working clinically or you feel like you don't belong in the op, sometimes it's not the actual chair side work that you dislike, but it's actually the environment in which you are doing this chair side work that you dislike. I hope that makes sense. In some states, there are actually more options than just working in a private practice or in a corporate office. There can be options such as working clinically in hospitals, prison facilities, nursing homes, schools, and much more. So I encourage you to look into that too. However, of course, there are hygienists who are truly not fulfilled with chair side work. So if that is you, here are some other things you can do with your dental hygiene degree. Become a writer. There's lots of opportunities for dental hygienists to become writers in the world of dental hygiene, such as today's RDH, RDH Magazine, and Dimensions of Dental Hygiene. I'm sure there's lots of other opportunities to write for dental journals as well, and even dental assisting magazines and journals. Something for you to look into if you want the dental audience as your audience. Also, if the dental or dental hygiene or dental assisting audience is not your vibe, you can still write about teeth. There's opportunity out there to write articles specific for patients. So your audience would be the dental consumer or the non-dental professional. And I actually offer this on my website, teethtalkgirl.com, which I will link below for more information if you're interested in the community writers program for patients. Research. It is possible to work at a university or at a private science lab as a dental hygienist. I met a hygienist once who worked in a science research lab because they needed someone with tooth morphology experience. I do believe she had her bachelor's degree in chemistry as well as her associate's degree in dental hygiene, so that made her an outstanding candidate for this specific job. But in general, there's lots of labs that are looking for individuals with a science background, which is all of us dental hygienists. Again, with time, I'm sure more and more places are requiring bachelor's degrees, so that's always something to consider if working in research is something you want. Also, I just always immediately think of science research when I say research, but of course there's also marketing research, so consider that for dental companies. That would give you more of a business angle. However, again, most corporate jobs, I would assume, recommend a bachelor's or even require a bachelor's degree. Education. You can be a dental hygiene instructor. I do know that you absolutely, at minimum, need a bachelor's degree in most states to teach dental hygiene lectures and many dental hygiene schools even recommend or require a master's degree so the bachelors in some states and some schools would even be a minimum requirement also sometimes they will require you to have been graduated out of dental hygiene school for so many years before you can teach dental hygiene that's just something else to keep in mind if you plan on being a clinic instructor specifically in the clinic every state might have different requirements but some do not require a bachelor's degree for that, for the adjunct clinic faculty. So that's all stuff for you to definitely look into based on where you live and where you wanna teach. Sales. There are lots of dental companies that look to hire specifically dental professionals for their sales team because who better to sell a product than someone who's actually used that product on their patients. I know some companies that offer traditional sales roles where you jump on the sales team with all the other salespeople who went to business school, which is pretty cool. And I also know of some companies that offer non-traditional sales roles where they have specific programs for hygienists without traditional quotas. So you would instead focus on sales from an educational angle. So look into different companies. There's literally thousands of different companies that sell dental products. Marketing or advertising. If you love that idea of living that business life with no scrubs, but you're not into the whole sales thing, I've heard of hygienists working for dental companies in non-dental sales roles, such 
as marketing or advertising. Again, who better to create dental advertisements than dental people themselves, right? Create your own brand or product. This is what I'm doing now, as well as working part-time chairside in the app. I have this brand, Teeth Talk Girl, and I have my website, teethtalkgirl.com, but of course I do not sell products. So I would consider Teeth Talk Girl more of a brand than a company because my website focuses on patient education. However, now I've actually created a product as well. I've embarked in this new journey on creating a company called Happy Teeth, which is launching this year, and it will include tooth purses and different types of bags and accessories for the dental professional to help those in need. That is the mission. Of course, to learn more about Happy Teeth's mission, you can visit my website, givehappyteeth.com, and I'm really passionate and excited about it. So yeah, I'm creating products. It was hard, and it continues to be hard, but it's worth it. So having said that, if there's a dental product in mind that you have been thinking about creating, like if you want to invent something to even use in the op, like a specific instrument or dental equipment, do it. Work for yourself. Be an inventor and an entrepreneur. This is a hard and a scary one, but it's so worth it. A book that helped me greatly with my self-confidence was How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh, which I will link that book in the bottom bar below. Just something to think about. Become a speaker. I would not consider myself a dental speaker. However, sometimes I do speak at dental events. So since I'm out there speaking sometimes, lots of people ask me if I have any advice on how to become a speaker. But speaking was never my intention, right? I like speaking. It's cool, but my initial passion and intention is creating my videos here and my articles on teethtalkgirl.com and now my new journey of happy teeth at givehappyteeth.com. So speaking for me was kind of like a cool added bonus and when I get asked to speak, it's usually to speak about what I'm doing. So the reason I say all this is because I don't have perfect advice on how to become a speaker. It, it happened for me in a non-traditional way. But having said that, I don't know if anyone has the perfect answer for how to become a speaker. I think it happens to a lot of people in a non-traditional way. They're either like doing research or they're doing something else to like speak about you don't just like become a speaker maybe you do I don't know what I do know is that becoming a speaker is different for everyone and you kind of have to find your own way into the speaking realm and a lot of it starts with networking again just based on my opinion from what I've seen my best advice is if you want to network to start small attend all of your community small ADHA meetings and your state ADHA meetings and then start attending bigger events and meet people and network and meet people and network and see where it brings you. So if there are any other unique career opportunities that you know of in your area, comment it below. Let us all know. Again, I can't stress enough how amazing it is to be in this field of dental hygiene. Whether you're a new hygienist trying to find your passion or you're a seasoned hygienist trying to change career paths, I hope we can all just raise each other up and support one another's decisions on helping people take care of their teeth, no matter how we do it. Everything is valid. We're all making a difference. I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe if it did. If you want more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, Teeth Talk Girl and until next time, peace, love, and teeth.